What's going on, everybody? Dylan Napoleon joined today by a professional lightweight set to make his PFL debut. Michael, the Canadian badass, Dufort. How we doing, Michael? I'm really good, man. Uh, so glad the news finally came out. Yeah. Um, people here in Quebec are so uh, supportive, so that's pretty good. That's that's good to to feel, and yeah. I, I feel so good right now, so feel dangerous. That's it, man. That's good, man. That's good to hear. Uh, when you came to Massachusetts last in September and fought there, I got to meet some of your uh, Canadian friends and people from Quebec. And man, they were so fun to be around. Um, I'm sure. Are you going to have any of them to, uh, coming out to Vegas with you this time, you think? I think so. Uh, yeah. I hope so. I have my promo code I just posted yesterday and uh, people look seems like they want to be in, but it's uh... it's further. Yeah, it's a pretty big flight, yeah. and you can't go by car, so right. Hopefully, people will come and uh, we'll have a blast like last time in Massachusetts. Yeah. And uh, I think your but, buddies, yeah, I don't know. I think your buddies that I met up there would definitely make the trip, bro. They seem like the type of guys to be there no matter what. Yeah, I have a couple of guys that wasn't that that were in Massachusetts that uh, I think they told me they wanted to come. So mm -hmm. I feel like they'll cool, they'll but... make the trip. Yeah, and Vegas yeah. is a uh, is pretty much like that place you want to be when you win a fight. So mm -hmm. let's go. That's it. The perfect fight week for you. Now, speaking of the big news, how long ago did you know about this? Oh, I was actually in uh, Florida uh, training. I, I went to Florida for uh, a month. Yep. And I think uh, the 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 second week I I heard about that. My agent oh. told me about no. that. So. That's perfect timing, second, bro. Yeah, makes the two other weeks uh, pretty much harder because uh, I had the me that mentality that uh, I got to prove myself even yeah. more. Yeah. Like, even when you don't know you're going to fight in PFL, like, y you're somewhere else. You're not home. Like, you got to fucking show that you're good. Yeah. And when you, when I got texted that I was in PFL, I was like, okay, uh, I got to prove it to myself now. So, yeah. That's awesome. I did it, and I think I did it pretty good. Yeah, pretty well, well, I want to ask you about Florida in a minute, but it seems like you trained your ass off down there and did a lot of real hardcore training, which is good, man. It seemed like you had a blast down there. Um, But let's talk about this big news just a little bit more, Michael. Uh, 2024 PFL season, you're going to be competing in the lightweight portion of the tournament, set to make your first appearance in just about a month, Um, March or uh, yeah, April 12th in Las Vegas. What a big time fight for you! A great way to start this tournament. How excited are you for this big time opportunity? I know you'd been searching for one for quite some time. Oh, bro, uh, it's a uh, an opportunity that may maybe comes once in a lifetime. So I gotta be a uh, fucking good and do my thing correctly. And uh, but that's the thing. I, I know how to do it. I know how to win it. I know I know everything about like PFL, like yeah. being with Olivier for so long. Um, bro, I, I train good. Uh, I train smart. Yeah. Uh, it seems so like ready for this. you already know how to compete in the PFL season, right? Because Olivier, Aubin Mercier, your teammate, he won the tournament, the lightweight tournament, two years in a row. Super impressive. So, and you were there with him for each tournament, both of them, every fight you were there um, training in, in, uh, in his corner. So you already know what to expect here. Do you think that's going to give you an advantage in this tournament? I think, yeah, the, the the team we have, like, we know what to do. We know how to do it. Like, some people get in, in, in PFL and they, they train stupid. Like, they get injured. Yeah. But that's the way with PFL. Like, you got to be the fight to 100%. You cannot be, like, injured or anything. Because if you're injured, like, your tournament's almost over. Yeah. So, train smart. Like, train, train hard. but train smart like yeah. you got to train smarter than harder so that that's it, the thing you, you got to be smart yeah it's not just you who's experienced they would be richer your head coach your training partners who have experienced those fight weeks like we said olivier any dietitians that you guys keep around they know how to help you guys in these times and times where you have to be ready you know time fight after fight stuff like that so it's good you know i feel like i feel like you would 
be the guy to follow after Olivier's footsteps being the fact that you know exactly what to expect. Like you were, he kind of like helped you get to this point in a sense. Right. And now being through it all, you already know exactly what's going to happen, but man, Las Vegas is quite the place to get this season started. What a cool place yeah. to fight. I'm sure you're super excited. It seems like it right now. What do you think about fighting out in Vegas? Ah, uh, man, it's my, it's my favorite place in the world. So I'm just going to make it perfect with a win that, that that's all I have in mind right now. Um, it's the win and fucking have a blast there. That's a, that's right, man. Just like you did in Massachusetts. The last time we saw you fight your opponent, the first round of the tournament will be Mads Burnell. Who's been a Bellator fighter for quite a while now fought, um, you know, a bunch of great fighters, and I'm sure there's a lot of tape for you to watch out there. What do you think about Mads, his fighting style, any initial analysis that you have about him? Uh, he's for sure a tough fighter. He he do not go down uh, easy uh, at all. He's a tough guy, but um, he's smaller. He's, the, he's pretty much the smallest guy in the tournament. He was a featherweight before. Yeah. So I think that's one of my adv advantage. Um. He might got like experience on me, but um, um, I'm going to bring him fight. Um, bro, uh, like I, I like to be a bigger, a stronger guy, and mm -hmm. I plan to be. Um, uh, like like you've seen in my last two fight, um, just being bigger and stronger. Yeah, uh, helps, helps me a lot. Like a quick, like two quick six in a yeah. row. Like my two last fights so if you count it in a pfl points it's a pretty much like what you want so man i'm not planning to change uh either pfl or whatever it is i'm going there to to have my quick six and uh got my finish in the first yeah man definitely like you've done in the last two fights exactly that get the finish in the first round you came off a very quick first round submission victory Back in September, when you took on Joe Gianetti for the Cage Titans lightweight title, we haven't seen you fight since. Obviously, what has the time off been like for you? Just a lot of training, I'd I'd assume. Um, after my Joe Gianetti fight, uh, I trained right away with Olivier for uh, his yeah. uh, championship PFL, like final. Yeah, yeah. So I was in the gym like pretty much right away. I wasn't injured and anything. So yeah, I I came back for Olivier. And then uh, I'm pretty much always in the gym, even if I had no fight because I, I was like a free agent. So yeah, I was waiting for a call and always being ready. Um, that's the thing. And uh, I wanted to keep my weight low. So if yeah. I could, like, if I get like short, uh, short uh, uh, opportunity, like pretty fast, like I was ready. Um, that's what I did, man. My, my, my weight is very good. Um, never been so low and, uh, I'm pretty much right now at the weight I used to fight when I, when I fight. So it's good to like be at that weight yeah. for a long time. So my, my body gets used to it. So when it's time to compete, like I know how to do it with the weight I have right now. So that's pretty much the, the what happened, man. I was in the gym training always and, uh, trying to get smarter. And Definitely. that's something I I pretty much learned in, in, in Florida. It's like don't train your don't only train your body, like train your mind. When you go to training, don't just do your exercise and get out. Like do right. your exercise with, with something in mind. Like when you want to be more explosive, like try to be more explosive in the training. When you want to work on your wrestling, like try to learn wrestling method, like try to learn about like everything. As it's going, yeah. Yeah, so that that's how I I train right now. I train like like I said, smarter. Um, everything I do is is because I do it because I have a purpose. Yep. And um, that's it, man. Always training smart and uh, gets gets me to the point I am right now. And like I'm I'm I am a smart fighter right now. Yeah, absolutely. I'd agree with you there. Um. After the last victory, did it kind of feel like you were in the middle of a waiting game in a way because you didn't really know what to expect next? You may be a regional fight, which obviously you didn't really have to do and you probably didn't even want to do. Um, but maybe in order to prove yourself, since the calls weren't coming, you thought UFC Canada might have been an option. Um, then you thought maybe you make it into the UFC another way. Now you're in the PFL, so I'm glad everything worked out the way it did. But did you ever feel like you were kind of stuck in the middle and you didn't know what to do? 
uh, at some point you got to trust your agent and that's pretty much what i did like i knew in the worst case scenario i was going to defend my title for cage titans yeah. and that's something i uh i would have been proud of like i think like you're not a champion you're not really a champion uh if you haven't defended it once and um that's my mentality so i was going to defend it and cage titan is such a good promotion yeah it's like th those guys are awesome like very good people um they deserve all the love in the world so i will have given give him some love absolutely shout out to cage titans whenever i get up there it's always a fun show i know how to blast at that event that was a great card, and I'm glad that you, as a fighter who was kind of coming from the outside, made the haul from Canada, had a good experience. That's always important, man. Yep. That's it. So right now you ride a, a four-fight win streak, very dominant, two of those being first-round finishes. Why do you think you've been so dominant, and what has helped you be so dominant in the cage? Uh, I don't I don't necessarily fight to give a show to people like the show – comes as if it if it has to come and i'm just going to fight for myself for for for, for me and i fight to finish my opponent I, I fight like i don't fight to to take punches right now I, I fight to give him and finish like most of the time i visualize a lot and i visualize the quickest fight i can have and like it's short short like it's always short and yeah so if you can see it every 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 day before before a fight like is going to help it to happen. So it's a lot of visualization and uh, trying to get as smart as I can and not get punishment. And in that tournament, you cannot take punishment. Like that's right. Play caller last year, he fought in the semifinal, gave a fucking hell of a fight with the with um with the, Shane Burgos with Burgos. But man, he broke his hand. He probably couldn't walk after the fight. So yeah, he, he was all the, banged up. Yeah, uh, to the final, he, his hand was still broken in the final. So, man, you, you cannot give like that. That, like, you got to win your fight, but try you can't to win. Get you, yeah, yeah. In that fight, you, I would agree. <clears throat> yeah, they were, they were, the, they wanted to entertain the crowd, and that I get it. They put on a banger of a fight. Yeah. Um, but I see what you're saying here, Michael. You got to be a little smarter than that because you could, it could cost you in the long run injuries and stuff like that. So yeah. And, and PFL it is a long run. It's yeah. four fight. You got to win four fight in fucking six months. Man. It's crazy, bro. That's crazy. It, it, it's a lot. Like, so be ready for, be ready to, to fucking train less, I guess. Just it seems cause... like there's no better man for the job though, man, to coming <laughs> off two first round finishes needing to get these guys early, out early to save yourself from injuries and stuff like that, bro. Mm -hmm. They got the right guy for the tournament. Yeah, sure. I mean, my, my, my mind right now is well settled. Like, I have that mentality that I, 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 I always had that mentality, though. I want to finish my fight quick. So, um, yeah, I'm the man for I'm the man for this year. That's right. So what I was going to ask you, a lot of people looking from the outside in, they might see you as like the newcomer. Obviously, you'd fought in the PFL uh, Challenger Series, so they might know some about you. They might have also seen you in uh, Cage Titans where you won the title or when you beat uh, Luis Pena in the first round as well. Three awesome things that people might recognize you for. But some people, they might know some of these Bellator and PFL lightweights a little bit more. What do you have to say about the people who see you as like the new guy and uh, the people who might not recognize how great you really are just because they haven't seen much of you yet? Bro, I like being an underdog. Uh, it's, it's so fun. When people don't know what to expect, you you, yeah. you cannot like disappoint them. You always surprise them. So that's how I'm going. Like, I'm, go I'm going to surprise everyone, surprise the crowd. And like I said, Man, I, I I like like I did in a uh, Massachusetts. I yeah. silenced the crowd. So literally, that, that's that's how I do, man. That's yeah. how I do. I fucking silence people. So people, when they that, think I'm I'm beaten, man, I, I show up. That was a crazy moment, bro, in Massachusetts because the arena was like the loud. It was like half as full as it was the whole night. It was the loudest it had been the whole night, considering the fact that it there was only half the people there and. Bro, it was a matter of what a minute and a half, and you had the, the literally silence for probably three to five seconds. Like it, the only people who were speaking were the guys that came down from Quebec who were yelling and going crazy. Those were yeah. the only people in the place talking. 
Yeah, I know we had some, we, we had a chance to hear uh, some French uh, people scream crazy thing. Um, yeah, that's fun, man. That That's that's what I like to do. That's like, I'm proud of my people. So yeah. I, I'm so proud when th that, when that happens. happens. That's, yeah. that's for sure the highlight of my career. Like that, that was such a good moment. Like everything Cage Titans uh, give me is, is a highlight right now. Yeah, I couldn't be I was glad I got to experience it. It was kind of different. It was a lot of fun up there. I had a blast in Massachusetts, man. But now seeing that you're in the PFL, right? You you were speaking about it a minute ago when you were out in Florida training at Kill Cliff. You were you you that's when you were informed about this tournament. And I know, judging by your Instagram stories and posts, that you were freaking going nuts down there in Florida at Kill Cliff, getting some really intense training in. What was it like for you down there training with those guys? Oh, it was so good. Like the, the U.S. is so much bigger than Canada. Like yeah. it's prob probably ten times bigger. So here, what we have in our in in my gym H two O or or Tresar or whatever is like five guys I can spar with, five pro guys, five good guys though. But yeah, only five guys. So you 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 know them pretty quick. Like it, it's tendencies. Fast yeah, you know the patterns, everything. But when you're <clears throat> in Florida. At Kilcliffe, you have like 50 people you can spar with. Yeah. So it's always a new challenge. Every every sparring is a new challenge. Every time you train. And that that's another thing I liked a lot is the training, the the, the training there, the, the trainer. Man, yeah. these guys are so awesome. Nick Lance is crazy jujitsu coach. Uh Greg Jackson. Greg Jackson is 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 awesome. Yep. Uh, uh and Ryuf is a pretty good coach. Like those yeah. coaches are awesome too like and they give their time and they they that that gym is their family so that that's a nice that's cool spirit like, yeah abs absolutely i'm glad you had a blast out there it's a good group of guys who pushed you the hardest anyone that really that you got some the best training in with i know there's a lot of guys yeah his instagram is sydney outlaw this guy is a fucking beast he felt sydney like outlaw bro that's one of the I, just, like i talk to you all the time on instagram i talk to him all the time bro he's a great dude man oh he is such a good guy he, he, and he is so good yeah he, he's the guy like like I, I like to train with him a lot he's he is smart he is good he is strong he yeah. pushed me he pushed me for my limits. Like Sydney is a fucking man. He's a beast, bro. I I watched his last performance out there in Chicago. His wrestling is different, bro. After he came back, he took a little bit of time off, a, a little bit, nothing crazy. But dude, he came back and his wrestling impressed the world. Two crazy <laughs> performances. He didn't get the his hand raised in a decision versus AJ McKee, but what a fight and just to he, wanted, he, he, he called for a rematch and... i know i hope he gets it eventually yeah me too because he is very good bro and for you being a really top-notch wrestler and having a good ground game what do you think his sid's ground game was crazy wasn't it really good wrestler yeah it was fun that was like like i said like very good round with him very yeah. competitive and after the rounds like he is the nicest guy. Uh, the the oh, nicest yeah. guy here. Really nice so, guy. Uh, it's very cool to to, yeah. to train with him. That's awesome, man. I'm glad you two crossed paths. You two are two of the fighters that I've connected with the most while doing this. And two great guys, two great... I, it's, it's, it's so cool when you see two fighters that you would just want to see training together, train together, right? Those you guys just make sense to train together. And I can all I can all already imagine how those rounds would, would have went. That's that's a damn good training partner for you, Michael. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, let's speak a little bit about more a little bit more about your training. Obviously, your home gym, H2O MMA up there in Canada. You've been back there for a little bit now after returning from um from Florida. And you've been there for quite some time. Richard ian olivier um what's his the other one um peter right fred, or fred dupra right yeah frederick frederick yeah yeah frederick he's a yeah. great fighter as well um oh fred fred is the best right now fred is the best to uh to mimic uh mads he yeah. like he is a 145 he, he has the same style he the same grit he has he, like he's pretty good as, at mimicking him so That's i train good. with fred a lot and uh yeah, he is a, such a good friend to me. Uh, always there for me. 
So, uh, yeah, man, he's my, he's my guy right now. He's my main guy. That's awesome. Good for you, man. How is Olivier doing after retirement? Is he still in the gym a little bit or no? Uh, not really right now, but, uh, he's probably he, enjoying he, his $2 million. Yeah. He, he enjoys the retirement. Yeah. He's with his family he is good. Uh, That's awesome. Like he, he deserved that time, that time off. And oh, yeah. uh, I know he's going, he's going to come back to uh, train with me and help oh. me. That's good. Uh, while during the tournament, but uh, for now, he, I think, he's trying to be the best fighter, fighter he can be, and uh, and and be the best version of him. Like yeah. enjoy his retirement. So yeah, the the past I, I two years. No, absolutely not. The past two years for Olivier have been a lot of training, and so now yes. he gets to return some time to his family, which very respectable move there. But how about uh -huh. GSP? I know I've seen him doing a lot of videos with, um, with Coach. And yeah, with all the guys in the gym, really, I've seen him a bunch lately. He's been doing a lot of work with Coach Richard, though. Uh, how you you've been seeing him around? Yeah, he's pretty much like in the gym like every day. He's, uh, I don't know, no, maybe not, maybe three times a week. So uh, he's helping. He's always there if you have question. Question. Uh, he's very simple, simple true approach. Uh, like like I said, if you have any question, he's the man, and like you know, you know what you, you know his answer. Are probably the good because he's the goat, right? That's so, right. Uh, That's right. Whatever you say, like you're like, okay, yes, yes, chef. Yeah, I like to see the videos that he makes with Richard, the instruction videos, all his crazy kicks and stuff like that. It's super cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're doing it a lot. Like, yeah, like pretty much everything you see is on uh, uh, uh George uh, videos. Like we drills it. Like we we drill it so much. Like yeah try to we try to mimic that that guy because he's the goat like i said yeah one more question about olivier olivier obviously being the past two years two years in a row he was the winner of this lightweight tournament now you michael dufour are kind of like the prodigy the guy who is behind the scenes with olivier through all of that what is it like for you to be able to carry on his legacy oh it's pretty cool um it's very nice like <laughs> Like it's good for Quebec. It's mainly yeah. good for for, for for Quebec here. It's yeah, it's so huge. Um, it's fun to to like not not be compared to Olivier because we're not alike at all. Like we're not the same fighter at all. He's mm. more of a control guy, and I'm more of a, a scrambler, scramble guy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's cool. It's cool to try to continue that that uh, that dynasty he's doing. Yeah. He's having. Um, He's one of the best Canadian fighter we've ever had. Like, we are, in, in my head, we have George, we have Rory, and we have Olivier. That, those are the three best Canadian fighter, like, probably ever. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's fun to it's fun to continue that and try to fucking get in that in that same uh at that same level that this guy this guy this guy was at at, at his peak. Absolutely. Now, being able to continue that for your country as well of Canada, being yep. able to put Canada on the map some more and really just kind of being like the new guy in the cup for Canada. I'm sure it's an honor, right? It's got to be to be that guy. You just were fighting at a regional level. And now you're international. You're the new Canadian, you know, up in the, in the big leagues. How's that feel for you? Yeah, that's good. I, I feel like Canada doesn't have enough like representation. Uh, we have so many great fighter and uh we're not we're not enough represented on the worldwide uh scale mm -hmm. uh i think we should we should have more fighter in the the best organization but um right now i'm I, i'm gonna i'm going to to show to people that canada's here and canada's good and yeah um yeah you're gonna be one of those guys to start that trend and prove why uh, Canada is really that good and why pr more promotions should be getting their hands on the Canadian fighters. That would yep. be, that would be a, a good thing for you to do. Yep. One last question for you, Michael Dufort, when you make the trip out there to Vegas from Quebec and fight on April 12th, taking on Mads Burnell in the first round of the lightweight tournament that were the regular season, rather uh, what can fans expect from you? The, the the guy with the most art you'll ever see like i'm not giving my uh i'm not letting my 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 in french would say like 
la peau de l'ours avant de l'avoir tué. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going there to just to to see if 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 you want to go through me, you're going to have to fucking give everything. And because uh, I don't give any any gift in in, a, in the cage, uh, I'm a hell of a I'm a hell of a opponent. If you if you try to try to outpace me, I will show you that it's very difficult, and <laughs> you'll probably like give up before I do because uh, I don't give up. I like it, man. Never been finished, Michael, the Canadian badass. Do for always a pleasure talking to you, my brother. I hope you have a great couple rest of the weeks in camp. Hopefully you stay healthy, everything goes well, safe travels, everything like that. Always wishing you the best, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you compete on April 12th. Thank you, Dylan. You're the best. I appreciate it.